So welcome back, and here we are on session 11 of our look at Paul's letter to the church in Rome, and we're going to be looking at chapter 7. Now you might remember that uh, this letter was written by Paul for two reasons, to set up a visit that he was going to make to them uh, on his way to Spain, and to settle a dispute that was happening between Jewish believers and Gentile believers. The Jewish believers were saying that for the Gentiles to be true believers, they needed to observe many of the religious traditions that were outlined in the law. Uh, what both of these groups had in common was a love of the Lord Jesus Christ and a desire to live lives that honored and blessed him. It's just that they had very different views about how to do that. The Gentiles said that, well, we've been saved by grace through faith. Uh, that wasn't because of any observance of any Jewish law, such as circumcision or eating only kosher meat. They were all trying to do the right thing, but not all in the right way. And so Paul, who'd been a devout Jew, following all the laws and customs of the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, knew that he had to step in and explain why it was that the Gentile Christians were right and that it was not just a religious disagreement of no particular consequence, but rather it was vitally important then, just as it is vitally important today. It's important today because it's the difference between living our Christian lives by just following the rules and living them by experiencing a wonderful personal relationship with Jesus. It's the difference between trying to live a Christian life in our own strength, using our willpower and experiencing the freedom of living life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And right at the start of chapter 7, Paul gets straight to the point of why this is so, so important. He's speaking to the Jewish believers when he says now, Dear brothers and sisters, you who are familiar with the law, don't you know that the law applies only while a person is living? That's chapter 7, verse 1. And he uses the example of marriage to demonstrate this. Well, uh, while uh, the husband and wife are alive, they are legally married. But when one of them dies, the other person is freed from that marriage contract. They can go on and marry again if they like. Death brings the law to an end. Well, Paul's already reminded them in chapter 6 that they should count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's uh, chapter 6, verse 11. Those Jewish <coughs> believers have been released from the law because they have died. As Paul says to the Colossian church, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. That's Colossians 3 verse 3. If you died, as you demonstrated at your baptism by going under the water, then the law ceases to have a hold on you. So, as, as Paul puts it in chapter 7, verse 4, so, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. Death frees you from the law. Well, he says, you died. You died with Christ. You shared in his death. And in that death, the authority that the law has over you died. You can't be under the authority of the law and the authority of Christ. And of course, <clears throat> that point is equally true for us today. We can't be under the authority of Christ and under the authority of anything or anyone else in terms of us putting our trust and obedience in them in the belief that that's what's going to save us. And that's why this is so crucial in Paul's mind that this is made clear. Living our lives either by willpower or by following a set of rules never works. It never works because we're not strong-willed enough or good enough. 
And so Paul outlines a new way of living that isn't dependent on our self-will or our successfully navigating all the rules and regulations. It's the way of the Spirit. Now we can serve God not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the Spirit, he says in verse 6 of chapter 7. What that means is that we can now serve God through the power of God's Holy Spirit within us, a power that we did not have access to before. It's actually the only way to successfully serve God. So what happens when we choose to try and serve God in any other way? What happens when we don't fully rely on God but try to go it alone instead? That's what Paul turns to now in the rest of chapter 7. He says <coughs> that, the, that the point of the law is to show me that I am bad. <coughs> it isn't bad itself, you know, that, that, it, but, but rather I am bad. The law just shows me the truth about myself. For example, if I were to show you a box and then said, don't, don't look in the box. Whatever you do, do not look in the box. Well, that would be the kind of thing the law would say. But the problem is, as soon as I know that, uh, that um, there's a box there, that I'm under no circumstances allowed to look inside, my mind starts wondering, what's in the box? Why am I not allowed to see what's in the box? I bet it's something valuable, something desirable. And before you know it, I'm having a peek in the box. I can't help it. That isn't the law's fault, it's my fault. The law just told me what not to do. I was the one who actually did it. The point is, the law just points out what I should and shouldn't be doing. It doesn't give me the power to actually make the right decisions. Only living by the Spirit does that. So to illustrate all of that, Paul puts himself into a picture that he paints of why living by the law doesn't work and why living by the Spirit is the only way. He's saying, let me paint you a picture of what living in those two ways is like. And to make this real, I'm going to pretend to be the person, first of all, who lives by the law and then I'm going to show you the real me, the person who's living by the Spirit. And you'll see why I chose the living by the Spirit way. And why you need to choose that way as well. He starts this illustration by becoming that person who decides that they're going to live trusting in the law. He says, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. He just sums up here the frustration of trying to do the right thing in the wrong way. The point of the law is to tell you when you're doing something wrong. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good, says verse 16. See, He's saying the law is working if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, because that's the point of the law. But it can't go that crucial step further and stop me doing it. I can't do good just by following the rules using my own strength. It just doesn't work. So Paul carries on putting himself in the place of the person who tries to get through life by just trying their hardest to follow the rules and be good. He says, I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do good, I inevitably do what's wrong. That's verse 21. Then Paul puts his finger on the true problem. 
He says, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who can rescue me from this body of death? See, after a lifetime of following the law, keeping the rules, doing all he could to please God, he finally realized it was all futile. Who can rescue me from this body of death? I am the problem. I cannot save myself. I need to be rescued. That was the seismic realization for Paul. In fact, it is for just about everyone. We all like to think that we're in control of our destiny, that we can shape our own lives, be the masters of our own future. Paul finally realized the truth in this scenario he's painting. No, I can't. I need to be rescued. And in that realization, he asks the crucial question, the question that everyone has to ask at some point of their lives. Who can rescue me from this body of death? Not what can rescue me, not how can I rescue myself, but who? And Paul gives us the glorious answer that changes everything. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 25. See, right there is the answer. Jesus, and only Jesus, can deliver me from this body of death. Whether you're like Paul and you try to reach God through following a set of rules in the story that he was telling, or you're a, a non-Christian who is pursuing fulfillment through your career or through drugs or through some other religious system, the truth is I don't need a set of rules or good intentions. I need a saviour to save me from this body of death. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is the way. Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for me. And having rescued me, I am called to spend my life living that out. And that's what chapter 8 of Romans is all about, as we'll see next time. But for now... Let's pray together and thank, thank God for Jesus Christ, the only way, the only one who can rescue us from this body of death, the one who can set us free when our free will is going to take us the wrong way, when our good intentions will, will break down, it's only Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now. We thank you that you are our saviour. Who can rescue us from this body of death? You can. You have. You are our rescuer. You are our redeemer. You are our saviour and our Lord. And there is no other way by which we may be saved. The law shows us what we're doing wrong, but doesn't give us the power to do what is right. Only submission to Jesus Christ changes that. And I thank you that for those of us who have done that, we have experienced the, the freedom of knowing that we have the power within us to live lives that honour and glorify God. So thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your death on the cross. Thank you for your resurrection and thank you for the power of your spirit that lives within us, that helps us to choose 
to go your way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we look at chapter 8. And um, uh, it's a wonderful, glorious chapter. And so I can't wait to share that with you. I hope you can join us then. Until that time, God bless. Have a great week.